We are in Peckham with uh, Gavino Divino. This is not your real uh, name, it's an artist's uh, name. Uh, but uh, we talk with you about uh, Russia. Russia is a country which is now uh, not known as a, not a lover of uh, multicultural society. Especially, they have uh, some problems, uh, at least uh, in terms of a political establishment, uh, with uh, the diverse society which is uh, uh, rising in the Europe, in the in the West. Uh, and uh, so we talk about two people who have uh, similar names but uh, they are very different. We talk about uh, Pushkin, Pushkin, uh, a famous writer of the past, and uh, Vladimir Putin. Okay, let's start with uh, Pushkin. Pushkin. So his, his full name is Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. Um, my full name is Gavin Odiambo Okello Davis. Um, I'd like to briefly talk about me and then talk about Pushkin, how we have something in common. Um, so, Gavin Odiambo Kello Davis. I was born Gavin Davis. And those are Welsh names from my grandfather's side. My father's side, who is Lancashire Welsh, that's him. Born on the Wirral. However, I'm obviously of African descent. Where did that come from? From my mother, who was born in Kenya. You really like me to shout? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> my mum is from Kenya. And I recently moved back home. I was living in London, that's where we met. And then shortly afterwards, I moved back home and I realized how important it is to embrace your African heritage. So obviously, as we know, Africa was colonized uh, by Europe. It, all of it, I think very, very few countries actually survived without colonialism, um, which means that when we're born here, a lot of the time, many of us are disconnected from our culture. And I think from bullying, racism, all these different things, we've all got these pressures to abandon our um, original heritage. And this isn't just for Africans, it's for Indians, for Chinese, for anyone who's either from the old Commonwealth, Commonwealth, except the wealth isn't common. <laughs> it's owned by very few uh, certain selects of people. Um, and this is something. So recently I just had a brainwave and I thought, hey, why don't I include both my Welsh names and my Kenyan names and claim my Celtic and my Kenyan heritage. So that's why I decided to call myself Gavin, which in Welsh means white hawk, or Diambo, which means born at dusk, or Kello, which is my Kenyan family name, and then I've double barreled it because I am a noble gentleman, um, and I double barreled it with Davis, which is my surname, which means the son of David, which is Welsh. So this is my perfect blend of European and African heritages. And if we look at uh, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin, for example, he's also got a blend of African heritages. Not many of us in the West know much about Pushkin unless we have studied Russian, like I have. But if you have delved in a bit deeper, you will actually have found out that Pushkin was actually of African descent. How? How? Why? Because, because uh, Russia did not have colonies in, uh, uh, in Africa. That's also why many Russians now, they said, we, are, we cannot be racist because we did not have uh, colonies, we did not uh, have a uh, slave trade from uh, Africa. Ridiculous! <laughs> so, if we look at um, Russia's history of oppression and colonialism, Horrendous. They did exactly the same thing as my ancestors, the Anglo-Saxons, did when they went to North America. And obviously Spanish had the same thing going on in parts of North America and also South America. The French are doing the same thing with the fur trade in Canada and also the middle of, of, of North America. You know, they were all doing it. They were all doing horrendous things. And actually Russia when they um, went eastwards, they conquered Siberia. And people like Yelizaveta, who was, I think she was an empress, I think, well, there's been two empresses of Russia. There's been Yelizaveta, who was um, Peter the Great's daughter. Um, she, you know, ordered people to just go to Siberia and slaughter. Slaughter en masse, so people you know, the Cossacks, they were trained as mercenaries and they were sent over there and they just destroyed, annihilated, burned, pillaged, all of it. Everything that 
you know, European people did in North America. So actually, if they say that, it's a complete lie. Because if we look at um, how those people live over there, um, the Siberian tribes, the Asian tribes, people descendants of, of Mongolians, etc., etc., um, they are living in poverty. Um, they are living, you know, many of them are moving to the, to the western cities of Russia, such as Moscow, St. Petersburg. But of course, there's a huge amount of racism that goes against them. And if we look at um, the rest of Russian kind of co conquered territories, which is think of like the Caucasus, so the Georgians, uh, Uzbekistan. The Chechens. Yeah, the Chechens, all of that. You know, these Muslim, um, Asian tribal people who have been long conquered by the, by the, by the Russians, the Russian Empire, and we're talking before the Soviet Union, um, they, if they, for example, if they are to travel to uh, Moscow, they are going to be called Chorny, and Chorny means black. Now, if we think about myself, if I were to be in Russia, you know, uh, the polite term in Russia would be Afrikansky, Amerikansky. We can understand what that means. So I will say to them, Ya Britannic, obviously I'm a British person. Ah, okay. And they'll be looking at me, they'll be looking at my skin color, my hair, and then they'll ask me, so, the Afrikansky, Amerikansky, da? Just after I told them that I'm British. Ridiculous. Yes, ridiculous. But that's how things work and that's how people feel comfortable. But anyway, colonialism for you. <laughs> but Pushkin, uh, however, has been a successful uh, yes. writer and a successful uh, person in the Russian uh, public life. That's true. Um, Pushkin um, was born at the start of the 19th century. Uh, he was born in St. Petersburg to a noble family. And he was educated in a lycée, as they say in, in Russian, or lycée, as you know, what you'd say in French. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, Peter the Great enforced uh, a mass adoption of French language, French uh, fashion, French culture, because he wanted to up the Russian game. He saw his people were primitive, that these long beards, you know, the bayar, the old kind of Russian aristocracy. Um, he saw that they were, no, absolutely won't do. I remember what, reading this story about how the Russian, uh, there, was, there was, I think, maybe an English emissary who went to Russia and then all the Russian noblemen got completely pissed, drunk, and they were throwing vodka bottles at people. And it was a big embarrassment. So he didn't want that to happen. So he wanted to become sophisticated, comme les Français. Oh, oui, bonjour. He wanted to do that. So then he made all of them chop off their beards, adopt French fashion, speak French, and that's it. So that would be the reason why Pushkin um, in the 19th century, because obviously Peter the Great was 16th century, Late 16th century, early, seven, early 18th, no, wait, sorry, late 17th century, early 18th century, I think at least, that's right, um, whereas Pushkin was born in the early 19th century. So then Pushkin was educated in both French and in Russian and was obviously fluent in both. Now I think what's interesting about his African heritage is his great grandfather, he's a great grandfather, he was an eighth grandfather great, uh, anyway I think his great father or great grandfather was actually Ethiopian um, I know Ethiopian was just a, a general term for what we know as Negro just someone of African descent so he might have been from the from the nation of, of Ethiopia I don't know what Africa's geography looked like back then but he was known as Ethiopian and he was enslaved by the Turkish Empire um, and the Turks who were battling with well, the, the Ottoman Empire, the, um, the Ottomans who were battling with Russia over land, they offered this African man as a peace offering, well part of a peace offering I'm sure, to the Russian Empire. So the Tsar accepted the peace offering and he started to be a footman for the Russian Tsar. And now we have uh, Erdogan for Turkey and Putin for Russia. Erdogan, the president of Turkey. Yes. Oh, well done. The trivia was done. Well done. Okay, yes, this is true. So, with that, um, Pushkin's great-great-grandfather, great-grandfather, whichever one it is, he was um, accepted into the Russian nobility because he was... He did so well as a footman, he impressed the Tsar, it was Peter the Great, and he said, well, you have now, you know, up in the ranks, you now deserve an upgrade. 
So you now are going to um, have the ability to marry a Russian noblewoman, you can have a wife, you can have a title, and that's it. Now you're now part of the Russian nobility. So that's it. What, a, what an amazing thing. So obviously he had, a, he had a child. That child had another child. And that child who came out after that was Pushkin. So he would have been an eighth um, African. So in terms of integration, Russia was better than uh, Western countries because they accept him inside the nobility? Well, I'd say so. I think, um, obviously, if you look at portraits of Russian, you know, nobility, you will still see, you know, the same styles. You know, they will have adopted the same fashionable styles from, say, France or England, who were uh, operating in, you know, the transatlantic slave trade, um, who were the, you know, the, the architects of white supremacy as we know it, you know, to have... Uh, a noble woman like this with a little African kind of pet kind of in service to this to this European woman or man you know the Russians obviously adopted this style but because they didn't have the same history obviously they had the same they had a similar history in terms of what uh, the Russian Empire did to the Siberian tribes to the people of the Caucasus um, but in terms of African transatlantic slavery, not quite the same, but it was have still been fashionable to have had an, an exotic African with a turban, a little earring, with like silk, you know, bright colors. It would still have been fashionable. So I think um, it, le it, it kind of lent itself to this fashionability um, of the time. So, so now coming to the present, uh, yes. uh, you have lived in uh, Russia for some time. I've traveled to Russia. But uh, not for a weekend? Not for just a weekend, no, quite extensively traveled to Russia. And uh, what did you experience? What did I experience? Well, I, I mean, mean... in terms of diversity, of respect for diversity... I mean, I, mean, I, I, I suppose I can talk about uh, what I experienced. I mean, for me, the first time I went was with university. That was uh, at a university called Kazan, in a city, sorry, in a city called Kazan. And that was, hmm, for me, an, an interesting experience. It was an eye-opening experience. There were definitely some amazing pieces of architecture, some beautiful buildings being put there. Um, but again, I was a little bit younger, and I didn't quite fully know myself or fully know what I wanted out of my, you know, my Russian learning experience. So I think the second time that I went was in 2017. So that first time was 2015. The second time was in 2017. And I was invited there by a Russian friend and I was really shown, you know, the very glamorous side of wealthy Russia. So we stayed in the hotel and then we went to all these fancy, fabulous restaurants where we have ikra, which is how they say caviar in Russian, you know, vodka, champanskaya, whatever you want, whatever you want. And that was a completely different side of life that I definitely hadn't experienced before. So to experience that in Moscow was very, very, very interesting. Um, at the same time, I did go to St. Petersburg too on the same trip. And I'd made some friends um, on Instagram and they'd seen my pictures. I'd been kind of doing this kind of, I suppose, cosplay of um, dressing up as Nicholas II, but with red lipstick and, you know, all these little different details, just modernizing it. Um, and then they'd obviously found it through the hashtags and they invited me to St. Petersburg and that's how I went over there. So I was obviously very well received in, in Russia and obviously walking around visibly, as we know, queer, visibly of African descent, you know, I came back and I, and I am able to tell the tale. So I think, yes, there is, there are violence, there is violence and there is prejudice and there are all those horrible things. But then I think also in any place, there are lovely kind people who just love to just talk about that culture and love to share and that kind of thing so I think you know I've been that was in summer and I also went in the winter which is incredible I mean I don't know if anybody's experienced minus 25 in Moscow but when it's on a sunny day it's one of the most gorgeous things ever it's so crisp your you know your nose hairs might be freezing but you know what it's fine <laughs> and um, it was super 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 cool and I think I've got a very profound place in my heart for Russia. Let's make a comparison about, uh, uh, in terms of uh, racism between uh, Russia and uh, the UK. Okay. I'd say that racism is much more acceptable in Russia. Just like homophobia is much more acceptable in Russia. 
Um, whereas here, it's it's more causes more of a scandal. There, it's just every day. So I think violence against minorities is an accepted part of, of everyday life. Um, Anti-Semitism is a part of everyday life. So I think just like winter has extreme winters, they also have extremes in terms of you know, discrimination. It's a sad thing. So I think that is why I have never lived in Russia, but I've definitely visited Russia. So you will not go and live in Russia? I mean, if I'm able to get a lot of wealth and I'm able to have a very secure place, like all of those oligarchs, then yes, Russia would be a fabulous place to live. However, when you're living as everyone else, you have to work, you're poor, you're kind of paying rent, I think it would be very stressful, it could be a very stressful place to live, especially as a person of African descent, as a gay person. I just think that, you know, I can enjoy Russia whilst living in my own country where things, you know, there are problems in the UK, but... They're not the problems that Russia has, so... <laughs>